Hello, grade 12s. Welcome to this lesson on normal distribution and the bell curve in terms of symmetrical and skewed data. Let's join Zinzi now as she goes through these things with us. In order to investigate the normal distribution a bit further, we must recap exactly what it is and how we showed it graphically. Earlier in the series, we examined people's opinions of the food in a restaurant and people's opinions regarding service at the restaurant. We found that when we plotted the frequency distributions of the two surveys conducted there, they both produced bell-shaped curves. It is this bell-shaped curve that's called the normal distribution. It occurs often. Let's think about another situation. Imagine a test being given to the entire grade in one school. Let's say there are 200 learners in this grade. What do you think the test scores will be like? Do you think the scores will be evenly distributed from 0 to 100? This would mean that 20 students would get between 0 and 10, 20 students will get between 10 and 20, and so on, all the way to 100. If this happened, the teacher would get a frequency distribution that looks like this. Do you think that this is realistic, or is it more realistic to say that most students will get some sort of mid-range mark, while a few will get very high marks and a few will get very low marks? If this were the case, the frequency distribution would look like this. Most students here achieve around 60%, while only 5 get between 90 and 100% and only 5 between 10 and 20%. I think this is more realistic because this shows that most students are similar in their results while only a few get very high marks and only a few get very low marks. So, let's look at the trend of this data. It's very much like the trend we saw before because it gives a bell-shaped curve or what's known as a normal distribution. Notice something that's true for all normal curves the mean, median, and mode are the same. Let's now look at this normal distribution in combination with the other statistical properties we learned. The properties of mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation. If we look at this graph, it's quite easy to see our mode and median. Remember, the mode is the value that occurs the most. So over here, it's the percentage between 50 and 60 and the median is the middle value. As our values are ordered on the graph, we can see immediately that the middle value is also between 50 and 60%, approximately 55%. Because the graph is symmetrical, it's evenly shaped about its center line here at 50 to 60. Its mean will also be 50 to 60% or 55%. This is a special property of the normal distribution and happens when a graph is symmetrical like this one. There are times when graphs resemble the normal distribution, but they are not symmetrical. They look like they've been pushed over. This shape of the distribution is said to be skew. I'll show you an example. This graph reflects what would happen if the test for the whole grade was very hard. Many students would get lower marks. The students who achieved high marks before would still achieve high marks, but there wouldn't be as many of them. In this graph, it's easy to see the mode as it sticks out. It is here at 20 to 30%, but the median is not so easy. Notice that the bars on the left of this high peak are higher than on the right. This means that there are a lot of values on the left, and this causes the median to be somewhere in this left region. The mean also lands up in the left region, but closer to the middle. The mean and median are then not the same and the mean is larger than the median. We say that if the mean is larger than the median, the graph is positively skewed to the right. On the other hand, if the test was very easy, the graph would look like this. You can see most of the marks are high. However, there are still some students who didn't manage to do well. This is exactly the opposite of the other graph and the mean and median will be to the right of the peak, with the median more to the right than the mean. The mode here is at the peak value of between 70 to 80 percent. We say that if the median is larger than the mean, the graph is negatively skewed to the left. The normal distribution is common in many fields. 
a sample from a large population will look more and more like the normal distribution, the larger it is. Look at these graphs again. Our fitted trend line is smooth, but does not make a perfect bell shape. If we increase the sizes of the samples in each, the shape would get closer and closer to the perfect bell shape. An interesting thing happens to the standard deviation in relation to the bell curve. First, let's recap what the standard deviation is. Remember, the standard deviation is a value that represents the spread of data relative to the mean value. This means if the standard deviation is low, most of the data is found around the mean. But if our standard deviation is high, most of our data is spread away from the mean. So, look at this relative to the normal distribution. Here are the test scores for the same test taken at two different schools. Notice the means and the spread of the data about the means. Can you see that in the two graphs, the mean was the same, but each had a different spread of information? In this graph, the information is focused about the mean and therefore has a low standard deviation. While in this one, the standard deviation is high and the data is spread away from the mean. Here are several other normal distributions on the same axis. They all have the same mean, but different standard deviations. Look at how the standard deviation describes the spread of each of these curves. You'll notice that in some graphs, it's narrower than in others. The standard deviation describes the spread as the value itself describes how much of the data we catch on either side of the mean. In other words, within one standard deviation left and right of the mean, we catch a specific amount of the data recorded. And within two left and right, we get a larger specific amount, and so on and so on. Let's look. As you see here, if we move one standard deviation left and right of the mean, we cover 68% of the data. And if we move two standard deviations left and right of the data, we catch 95% of the data. This is always the case and is what the standard deviation actually describes. Can you see that when describing the scores of a survey or test that result in a normal distribution, we can describe the data very effectively with the mean, the skew, and the standard deviation. We're now going to talk to some professionals about where the normal distribution appears in their line of work. The first person we're going to talk to is someone in the industry who manufactures rulers. After each ruler is made, it's measured against the standard ruler and any error in measure is recorded. Good morning. Yes, we measure the errors in our ruler sizes. And we often see normal distributions in the results. I'll show you an example. This graph shows errors in a batch of rulers we made last month after we installed some new machinery. Wow, so it looks like you had quite a few that were the wrong size. What do the values of mean and standard deviation tell you? Well, to me, a mean error means the machinery needs readjustment and calibration to ensure that the mean error is zero. If a standard deviation is high, it means one of the machines is broken. It shows there's instability and the process is inconsistent with the results. These values allow us to fine-tune our equipment and identify problems when they occur. You see how useful these statistical properties can be. Now we'll talk to a political party official who sees the normal distribution on a regular basis. Today we're learning about the normal distribution and its statistical properties. Tell us how you work with the normal distribution and what its properties mean to you. Well, I'm in charge of deciding where to run campaigns to promote our party, and I make those decisions based on the surveys done in areas all over the country. Almost all the survey results I see look like normal distributions, and those areas with very low mean scores for support for my party are the areas I decide to target. What do you understand by the standard deviation? Often a high standard deviation with a medium to high mean tells me that we have support, but then there are also those people who don't support us, and it also tells me that there's a strong competition from other parties. In these areas, we use a different campaign strategy. 
in order to win over the supporters from other parties. Well, that's very clever. Thank you for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Remember to try the tasks for this section in the Advanced Statistics Task video. You'll also be able to find more resources on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Bye for now.